said the parish. We give thanks to God that we are worshiping together today. Today in our liturgy, we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our presider today is Father Ed Ahmed. We stand. Our opening song is 488, Love Divine, Love Excel, 488. <coughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Great and loving Father, your will, your will for us in Jesus is that peace the world cannot give. Your abiding gift is the advocate he promised. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel every fear. Keep us steadfast in love and faithful to your word, that we may always be your dwelling place. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Because there were little or no dissension and debate by Paul or Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was, also, who was called for Silas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard from some of our number who went out without any mandate from us, have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and send them to you, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond the necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Of God. 
Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed, and on which the names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing west, three gates north, three south, and three east. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its, as its foundation, of which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. How would we work through that? 
or even relate to that on some level. Well, and I think it's an interesting way that maybe sometimes we need to reflect on it because I think the scriptures touch on parts of that, you know, this weekend about what do we, when we feel left alone, what do we do? What resources do we have and how do you and I respond in faith? How does our faith come into question this? And I think one way that we hear today in today's gospel, Jesus is not only preparing but sharing something with his followers about how there will be a separation, yet it's not one that's lasting. It's one that somehow reminds them that the Holy Spirit will come to them and that they will struggle with some sense of aloneness, that is, being left without that relational compatibility or closeness. And it's an invitation for us to see what Jesus is trying to offer us as a message for our church, as well as for ourselves personally. How do we somehow recognize the working of the Spirit that still has work in our own lives? How do we recognize for ourselves the presence of Jesus working in us? Here's a theological as well as scriptural reality, I think, that Jesus tries to give to us. He says that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will come to us. And that's part of our Christian, not only scripture heritage, but also our theology that the Holy Spirit, when it's given to us through baptism, but also our appreciation and living it out, it dwells within us. And so we can say very creatively and honestly to our faith tradition, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Now, we might not always have that happening. We get caught up in life and things kind of happen where we can feel pushed away. But we have the assurance of faith that the Holy Spirit, that Spirit of Jesus, is alive in us. And it comes to us in a variety of different ways. One, within ourselves, to recognize there's a point <coughs> where we come to recognize this goodness of God that is given to us, and we can find that comfort, and not even comfort. The closeness of Jesus' courage, hope, and strength that overcomes all things. We can find that as a resource. The second, I think, that is even more important is that when we say to ourselves as a church that the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us, it also means it's dwelling within the church. And that in a lot of different ways, in the important ways, you and I, continually in our living and with one another as communities of faith, we are the one that become supportive witnesses, the living presence of Jesus in our world today, that indwelling is present in the church, that we walk with each other, that we support each other, that our care and love reflects that of Jesus. And that's one thing that will guide us very closely at this time of year to recognize that for ourselves. One of the interesting things that came out of the pandemic, although it was there during the pandemic and before that, was the reality of how people are really alone. How people are alone in their relationships, how many times people are struggling with trying to find their own place in the world, how they're trying to make things work for themselves, not only financially and otherwise, but also relationally. People are alone and even lonely. And that we cope in a variety of different ways. And one thing that I think we as churches are always meant to be and called to be is places where people come together that we are not only just here for church for ourselves, but we are the living presence of that Holy Spirit for one another. And oftentimes, sadly, we might be the only smiling face, that is if we're smiling, the only smiling face, the only affirming face, the only loving face someone might see during a whole week. That's hard for us to digest, but it's true, unfortunately. And it's a reminder for us, an invitation for us as a church to continually living in that spirit of Jesus that we can find in the presence of our own hearts, but one that is aligned within a community of faith that is even gathered here. Jesus talks about a very important part of our Christian dimension of life and discipleship today. He talks about allowing that peace of God is a gift that he has given us, and how that peace should flow through us as well as through the church. 
And this is why <coughs> and sometimes we maybe need to, I think, reflect in different ways. I think in a contemporary language and setting that we live in now, people think peace is, well, where there's no conflict. I see banners, you know, peace for Ukraine, I stand with Ukraine, I see all kinds of banners for peace. And sometimes we somehow say, let's have peace because things are falling apart or we're in conflict, we're struggling. <coughs> the gift of peace that Jesus left us is the peace he gave to his followers. And it is a peace that restores our relationships to be whole, to be holy, to be life-giving, to be alive. Peace, the gift that Jesus gave us, is one that are, is being constructed and created in your life, in my life, and our relationships with other people, in our households, in our communities, where we believe that we need to restore the brokenness of life and bring people a sense of hope and dignity. I don't know about you, but when life falls apart and I don't always have an answer, it's very frustrating. When I don't have anyone to go to, or when we don't have anyone to go to, it can be a very terrible struggle. And the gift of peace that Jesus invites us as a church to live in is how we, together, share that with our loved ones and our families, that it can be something that's part of our lives. That has to happen here. It has to happen in our communities of faith, that not only are we teaching ourselves, how to live in peace. We're fostering that with children and adults. We also have to recognize that in our institutions, be they political or otherwise, the peace of God means how we break away from that cycle of victimizing and ridiculing and diminishing people. That we can affirm people and what may hurt us or breaks us has a way of saying, the presence, of, the presence and holiness of God surrounds us. You and I, especially if we're a little bit older, we have a responsibility in Christian faith to share something with the young people in our world about what peace can really mean. We have a responsibility to show young people what it means to forgive and show mercy. We have a responsibility of breaking away from cycles of dominating other people. But the grace and goodness of God restores us to life. The other let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, He died and He should die. He died not made, not substantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with joy, Christ rising from the dead, we embrace the needs of all the human family. Let us turn to Christ, who intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father.
responses, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and our parish community, that we may always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we witness to our faith in constantly changing world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace around the world, especially in areas that are experiencing the daily devastation of war, that Christ's farewell gift of peace may be embraced by all nations, cities, races, and peoples. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may recognize the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners who are ill, that they may not lose awareness of God's continuing love for them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may receive the blessings which Jesus promised to his friends, especially Adam Kent, Patricia P. Mustachi, Vincent Rangel, and Teresa Roret. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Dennis and Timothy Gable, Rick Novak, Osius Ramothi, special intention of Margaret. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, both our intentions spoken and unspoken. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We have seen your glory, O oh God, and we have witnessed your mighty acts. By your Holy Spirit, put your voice in our mouths. Fill our arms with your strength and warm our hearts with your love. Then will we be worthy disciples of Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers that are offering to our prayers and thanksgiving and all that we come to offer and sacrifice may be acceptable God's witness. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings so that purified by your graciousness we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, 
but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore we are overcome with pastoral joy, and every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, saying together the unending hymn of your glory.
we remember the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that God calls us forward to live in peace and a hope of the promise of the kingdom. As we join ourselves and entrust ourselves to Jesus, we pray, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all fear and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers and friends, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith. Grant us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by thy unfaith over the powers of darkness, you have prepared our place in the new Jerusalem. Grant that we who this day have given thanks for your passing over may praise you in the city where you are light and Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The announcements for today are as follows. Registration for our parish school and religious education is ongoing. Please contact our principal, and Mrs. Potenza, for a private tour of our school. All youth in grades kindergarten through fifth grade are invited to join our vacation Bible school and go off road through the colorful canyons and trails of the Southwest for a monumental adventure exploring all of God's greatness. Registration is open until June 1st, so register now. We are asking for donations to help make our first camp successful. In the gathering area, you will find all donation requests. Please take a tag of our envelope and return your donation by June 5th. And please grab a bulletin on the way out of church for more information. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Cheer up. It's going to be sunny tomorrow. <laughs> Not too bad. Our <coughs> sitting number 432, how great thou art, 432. Thank you. 